Hello, I'm the Odd Night Builder. In this episode, I'm going to be starting a very short series of internet requests. <clears throat> so, I have a couple friends that have seen some stuff on the internet, mostly Facebook, and said, Hey, that's cool. Odd Night Builder, can you build it? Well, yeah, sure. I can try. So, in this episode, I'm going to be starting a Plinko board for bottle caps. It was seen on uh, Dipley. The idea here is, oh, you can do it yourself. He gives measurements for it, 12 by 20, you know, 13 and a half by 20, and then says, oh, hey, here's nails, and figure out the rest. Not really do it yourself if you stop halfway with the instructions. So, what I'm going to do is show you the part that you're missing. Now, traditional Plinko boards have triangles going down the side to bounce the disc off and just less nails so it's not getting stuck. Uh, this one by Dipley does not have that. So, what I'm going to be doing is just doing what they show there. I'm not going to have that on the side. Uh, chances are it's not really going to hit the side. It's going to go more towards the center. And I have figured this out. So I took my pegboard that I have on the shop, which have uh, all the dots one inch apart. I took some electrical tape, and as you see here on the picture, all the dots are one inch apart, and I took some matchsticks, just put it in the holes, and I took a measuring tape across it, and once you know it, it's every other inch. Gee, Dipply guy, you think you should have added that? Wasn't that hard to add. I found it out pretty quickly. So, instead of nails, because nails can come out over time, I'm going to do some cheapy screws. Doesn't have to be anything too big, probably an inch. Uh, I'm going to be using some of that nice scrap wood that I found. Uh, the three quarter inch plywood with the black backing and some of the strap stock. And probably some plexiglass I have laying around here. Not remembering exactly how to cut it. I remember something about uh, running the saw blade backwards. That's going to be fun rediscovering. But let's get started. So sometimes when you're building with scrap wood, there comes a time when you have to make a decision about adjusting the sizes that you have. The bigger piece is 11 and roughly a quarter. Uh, and then you got the other one that's like seven and a half. So, I mean, it, it's... It works out to be like 19 and a quarter if I go all the way and it's 24 inches long. So if I make just this one and, you know, sacrifice the three, uh, three quarters of an inch, the sides I have to offset an inch anyway for the, well, the sides I have to offset an inch anyway, uh, just, you know, for the bouncing and it's usually taken up by triangles anyhow. So I'm thinking if I just go like that. And I have these original screw holes here. If I fill them in, the decoupage is going on top of this anyway. So if I fan it, sand it and fill it, it'll be fine. So the first step in doing this, now that I have selected not having the glue pieces together, is to take my strap stock and make the frame around it. So now that's not exactly, uh, what was it, 13 and a half by 20? Yeah, that's what it says on the camera there. Um, I will just have to do some custom measurements. So here is the beauty of strap stock. So the three quarter inch plywood is sitting in the three quarter inch slot in this strap stock. The great thing about this is that I can set it right in place um, and do a butt joint just like they have in the video. Um, I'm probably just going to do uh, some nails and glue and along here uh, I'll probably just do uh, eh, probably one or maybe four nails. I'll do four nails on each side along with some glue and same on the bottom. This is set in an inch, which should be plenty for a bottle cap to go bouncing down. And there's a one inch lip on the back. So it's basically going to look just like this on the back. And, you know, it should be plenty to hang. Um, I really wouldn't even need uh, any kind of a hook to hang it up on a nail. Or maybe I could. No, it's up to him. It's up to the customer, really. Uh, so this is the best part about it. You know, I could just... It's even kind of hard to take off. So, you know, it's already made. I don't really have to do much. 
This part can go on to the back. Uh, if the customer wants more of a pallet look, I can leave it on there and uh, maybe just do a very light stain. Either way, it still looks nice and I don't have to do a whole bunch of cutting. So, benefits. 12 and 5 eighths by 19 and 3 quarters. Plan of attack is I'm going to glue the strap slots here and then I'm going to reassemble it. I'm going to then drill holes for the inch and a half galvanized brads that I have a bunch of. Um, two containers worth. So anyway, I'm going to do that. I figure two and then probably four. So it's not going to be too bad. So let's get started here. Assembly. still properly uh, glued up and dried so remember when I was talking about that grid before the the pegs on my wall so I literally ripped off a piece of my wall and as this is just an example I went every other one I drew a middle line down the center and I used a mix of metric and inches you know because it wouldn't be me otherwise uh, it was 230 something or other it was uh 274 274 in centimeters so i just went and halved it which you know wasn't so bad and i started to figure out all right so 39 you know increments in between and I said you know what that's that's stupid you know i want to do the inch part so i took this off the wall i left the half mark in the center and i said you know what let's do inches so i did inches and I have marked the board using this and I've done inches. So I have now marked it. There's quite a bit of uh, little pencil marks and all that. So I'm going to drill it and not too much, just a little bit. The uh, tape here shows where I'm going to stop because the screws are only so long. The screws are, uh, my screws, I keep saying screws, the nails, the nails are only this long. And, uh, you know, pre-drill, hammer it in a little bit, and then I'll put the plexiglass on top. All right, so, drilled the holes, and as you can see right here, there's two holes. If anything, that's a testament to me uh, trying way too hard and forgetting to have a better eraser in the garage because I didn't erase that prior hole. Yeah, oops, whatever. Okay, so I'm going to start nailing. So how do you keep the nails from going past where you want the plexiglass. Well, the easiest way to do that is to take a board that would be level with where the plexiglass will be and you slide it back and forth. So you take the smallest hammer you can because it's only going to take a little bit of force to push down the nails that little like half inch that you're giving and you keep going ever so slightly and you use a board or something else flat that goes from edge to edge and you keep going until it no longer hits. Now you try not to put too much force on it because if you put way too much force on it it's going to go further than you want and you're going to make a gap. The gap, is it so bad? Not really, but you really don't want something to uh, fall in there or you know whatever. It's just easier and also plexiglass isn't the most strongest material in the world. Lexan, eh, it's not the best and most of the stuff I have isn't that strong to begin with I'm going to be reusing stuff that I have around here. So the more support you have underneath that Lexan, the better it's going to be because, I don't know, Pedro may get hammered or one of his friends might get hammered and punch it or something. I don't know. Either way, I don't want it smashing because then it's going to come back to me. Hey, Odd Night Builder, why did you make it so weak? I didn't. I put nails underneath. It should be holding fine. So that would be my answer. So there you go. something really stupid. When I mean stupid, I mean like you put in half the nails and you realize 
Oh, I had to stain that first, didn't I? So what I did is I just started staining. And what happens when you try to stain around nails? You get this dripping thing going on, and it's not really great. So how do you fix that? You stand it up on its end, and as it's dripping, you just kind of work in the stain. Now, you may, you may ask, well, aren't you going to see streaks when you're using a little brush like this? Yes, you will. But you know how you hide those streaks? You go with the grain. And when I say with the grain, I mean really with the grain. So, like, when you have these little knots and details in here, you kind of just follow that. And then you don't really notice it as much. And uh, it ends up looking very nice at the end. Uh, I may not even uh, wipe this off. But I probably will, just because that's what you're supposed to do. But I probably won't give it as long as I really should. Or maybe I'll let it dry a little much. I don't know. Either way, this is how you hide that kind of stuff. So, this is the finished product uh, without the plexiglass on it and the uh, divider. So, I really shouldn't call it a finished product, should I? This is the product of what it is. And, well, this is it for now. I still have to get the plexiglass and all that. And it's rather late, so I am going to call it a night right now. So, we've gotten to the point where all the nails are in. I even put the little dividers in. Uh, I kept saying Lexan. Couldn't find my Lexan. So, Lucite, or basic... Uh, plexiglass is what I got. I ended up cutting it on the scroll saw after trying to score it for about a half hour and I just said the heck with it and I took the band saw. I tried to go a nice constant rate because if you stop you run the risk of the blade getting stuck and melted plastic. It it's just a mess. So anyway the sides of this match up pretty well. I may have to sand the edge but whatever, it came out pretty nice. Uh, I did a step-up method for drilling the holes. I did a very small drill bit at first, and I did a uh, much larger bit. The screws I'm going to be using are these little three-quarter inch uh, button heads. It should look pretty nice when it's done. I still have to do the labels, and i got to find a bottle opener. But other than that, it's uh, almost done. I've removed the plexiglass and I've made these labels. Um, I'm not very fond of the layout that the original maker has on this but <clears throat> I copied it. As you can see some of the labels are a little shorter just because of the way the layout ended. Uh, I tried to make the middle boards even with the nails above them. Get away stink bug. And uh, so now I'm going to take these out and I'm going to Mod Podge them. I have some uh, matte Mod Podge that my wife gave me and I'm uh, going to start that. The idea is to apply this uh, paste looking substance onto the wood. You don't want to go too far. Um, you just want to try to stick the area that you want to use and then also you're going to be doing the back of your image. Um, from what I've seen it's recommended that you print out stuff like this on a laser jet printer. Uh, unless you're doing a picture transfer, uh, which kind of varies. People say uh, ink is better for that. But for just applying appliques like this, they say laser jet because toner won't run. So, to be honest, this is my first time using Mod Podge. So I YouTube the heck out of it. It's a nice light coat. All the areas that you're going to do. And this stuff seriously smells like paste. Like, you know, stuff you used in kindergarten. Don't worry if you go over too much, it dries clear. Alrighty. Going to apply. Yikes. So, the next step <clears throat> most of the people that applied it had rollers and they didn't have these kinds of borders. Oops. So, I'm using this little wedge here to try to get out all the air bubbles and to make sure it's placed properly. So when they say, <laughs> do not touch it for 15 minutes, they're not kidding. Uh, I saw a little wrinkle here and I tried to push it out and it's now jacked up. 
Uh, I'm going to try to peel this up and I'll just make a new one. I wish I thought ahead to make a second one. Because I didn't. So I've waited 15 minutes and I'm putting a nice layer on here. Um, they recommend, they being the manufacturer, recommends that you put this on with a foam brush. I don't have that. So I'm going to try to keep the lines down to a minimum. Just say put a nice coat and it all dries clear. Tried my best at minimizing brush strokes. And now I let it dry for 24 hours. So it took about a month to get the bottle opener. I had asked uh, the customer for it and things happened. It was really busy at work and it just never uh, appeared. So I had to go on Amazon and I picked up a pair. And this is the one I got. The uh, Sam is still, so it's open here. Uh, the screws that came with it were way too long. They were about an inch, and this is three quarter inch plywood. Not really conducive. Anyway, I found some screws, polished them up, and put it in. And as you can see how it sits, it's not too bad. And it, the very ledge of it just about passes this. So it's done. But the final test, I have to go get a bottle of something. I don't really drink, so I don't have it at home. So I have to go get something probably tomorrow and uh, do a victory test, I guess. Uh, either way, this is done. Unfortunately, it just took forever. All right, so I went out and purchased a beer. It's just some common uh, beer. Uh, this one is uh, Sweet Water uh, Extra Pale Ale 420. It was cheap, and I could buy a bottle of it. I wanted to go for cider, couldn't find it. Oh well. So, let's see how this works, huh? So I got give a drink. I'm the only one here, so I'll give a drink to myself. It's not bad. So, uh, with that, I declare this a success. And uh, if you like my videos, please subscribe. And uh, to Oxide Night, I'm the Odd Night Builder. And uh, you have a good night.